say big Michigan fan. So growing up, I always knew the rivalry, always watched the games, football and basketball. So I kind of had a taste of that. Um, but now being a part of it, it, it's different. It's very different. And um, it will be an exciting game on Sunday. What would you tell the five freshmen coming in that it's their first game out against your biggest rival and the first place is on the line, too? Um, I mean, just go out there and have fun. There's going to be a lot of energy in the building. Um, it's going to be a really great game between the two of us. I know it's a short turnaround from last night's game, but have you had a chance to watch David Tillman and, and get a sense of what he can do? I um, watched a little bit of film on him. Uh, we'll watch more today and tomorrow, um, but not, not as much as of like uh, so far, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get that done in the next couple of days. I guess what stood out to you in that little film that you were able to see? Um, just how, how, how well they run in transition, how fast they get the ball to the floor, and um, how well he plays on the we got very good bigs, and we just got to be ready for that. What's your role in, in traditional defense against the team, I should say? What do you have to do? I mean, just depending on what happens on the offensive side. Um, I mean, I'm trying to get tip in, but I, I got to get back as fast as I can and just try and help out. I mean, the guards are usually the first ones back, so they're protecting the paint. And then just from there, everyone's kind of spreading out. And yeah, you just all got to get back and gather and protect the hoop. What have been seeing from Colin? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's improved a lot. I mean, you saw yesterday he, he came in. I mean, he missed a little bunny, but he, he's getting confidence every day. And offensively, defensively, he's, he's working on his game. And we say that in practice, and we're, we're giving him the confidence to just go out there and play his game. That uh, we know he can go play, and he's, he's showing the coach staff every day in practice he can do that. And um, he, he's just going to continue to grow and learn each and every time he goes in there. Is there a, go ahead. Growing up in a city where you know the Michigan Michigan State rivalry is really big, does that add an extra layer of like depth to like playing in the game? Or? Uh, I mean a little bit, um, but for me growing up, I mean I was a big Ohio State fan, so like, <laughs> it, it was a little different for me. Um, but I always watch the games. But now being here, it's so much different. Being involved with the rivalry and everything, I mean it's very different now. How special is it going to be to have uh, not only the '89 team, but John said uh, 200 program alumni are going to be coming in for it as well? It's something special. I mean it's something only that happens here at the University of Michigan, and to be able to play in front of those those guys, and um, I mean the whole school student section, and everyone, there's going to be so much energy in there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We just got to be ready to go in there and battle. And your was grandpa was a Spartan, so how did, how'd you end up finishing it? <laughs> uh, I mean, I took a little bit of advice from him, but I mean, he has all the love for me, so now, so it's all right. Was there a certain moment either last year or the year before when you got a sense of just how intense this game really is? I mean, I think my freshman year when we went into the Breslin Center, I was just kind of watching D. Walt and Zach play you know, with um, how much emotion they play. And I mean, just, I mean, we lost a nail biter there. Um, but then going into, I mean, last year, um, I mean, they're all, every time we play them, it's going to be a good game. Uh, it's going to be a battle. And it always comes down in the last couple minutes and how well we execute, how well they execute. And so we just got to be ready, and uh, we'll, we'll be ready. Though. John, going back to uh, last night, what did yeah. you think of Jordan whipping out your bow and arrow celebration? I loved it. I loved it. I mean, they all, they all have fun with it. So, I mean, I'm cool with it. I mean, as long as we're hitting threes and we're having fun, um, I'm cool with it. Where did that originally come from? Uh, it actually came from my roommate Luke Wilson, one of my best friends on the team. He's like, John, we got to come up with a celebration. So I was like, all right, we'll, we'll figure something out. So he's like, all right, let's do a bare nose celebration. So, so every time I shoot it, I'll shoot the arrow at him. He kind of falls He kind of falls down a little bit. So the cameras never get him. So he's always mad about him not getting attention. Um, but I'm giving his credit now. So, But it, it, he, I'll, I, I give credit to him. He, he kind of made it up for me. What other celebrations were under consideration between you two? Um, a couple. I would say a couple really dumb ones that I was like, Luke, we cannot do that. Like, this is gonna make a fool of myself. So I was like, I was like, I kept, I think I said no to three or four of them. He's like, all right, let's just do this. I was like, I'm cool with that one. Do you remember what any of those few were? (laughs) I don't even know. They're just so, they're so dumb. I was like, Luke, we can't do that. Do you remember the reactions you got the first time you did it from your teammates? Uh, they kind of like. They kind of like took a double take, I think. Like they didn't realize I did that, and then once they kept, that's all I was doing. They were just having fun with it, so it's it's off. What does Coach Beeline say to you when you miss a few shots in a row? He always talks about how he wants you to keep shooting, and he says he hopes it instills faith in you. Does it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he has a confidence in me to go out there and shoot. I mean, every day in practice, I'm shooting well, um, and so they have the confidence in me. Um, my teammates have the confidence in me. I mean, last game you saw, I was like one for seven. I just kept shooting. I mean, they know. They're going, to, they're going to find me, and if I don't have a shot, I'm going to find them. And even though I missed the first couple threes yesterday, I mean, the second half, I was three for three. So I just got to keep shooting, and they're going to find me the right spots and just find the seams and knock down the shots. It's a typical practice day for you in terms of volume of threes that you get up. Um, day before, 
not so much, but a couple days before, just we, we do a lot of di different drills, but then uh, on your own too, just getting a lot of shots up with the manager, so they're, they're always helpful too. Hundreds? Um, close to 100 or 50, 50 to 100. It's not, not a whole lot. You don't want to wear out too much, but just enough to get reps in. How much has your shot changed even just over the course of the last nine, six, eight months? Um, it's changed a lot. I mean, I put a lot of work and um, I give credit to a lot of managers to help me out. And I mean, they're always willing to rebound any time, so I can call them up and they're always here for the gym, always giving me tips. Um, and so I'm always listening to them. Are you able to self correct now, just watching film of yourself in terms of this is slipping or that's? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just kind of going straight up my jump shot. And then also, I mean, uh, that Maryland game, everything was short. I just had to get more arc on it, get more lift. And so just watching that and just having Coach B tell me what I need to work on as well, those little things really help. As tight as the Big Ten is, are you guys in the mindset that you can't afford to lose another game the rest of the way? I mean, we're just focused on this next game, taking one game at a time. I mean, it's just exciting to be in this race, and um, we're, we're just taking one game at a time right now. Do you notice an extra energy around Coach Beeline and the other coaches this week, or is it business as usual for them? Um, it was business as usual. I mean, we were focused on Minnesota all week, and now that today, I mean, I've really only seen Coach B just a couple minutes ago. Uh, I haven't seen anyone else, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, we'll have a lot of energy going to practice today, so it'll be a lot of fun. I apologize if you were asked something similar to this already, but how is going up against Tillman different from Ward? I mean, I don't think it's much different. I mean, they're two big bodies, very good players down post. Um, they both run well in transition, and I mean, you got to make them force tough twos and uh, just kind of be there, be my big body down there, wall up and rebound, try to block shots. But they're very similar, but they're also very different. But I just got to be ready. For you played against Nick in high school, right? Uh, I played against him again in the EU and stuff like that. How different is it, I guess, to go into this without that familiarity, for lack of a better word? Um, or does it impact at all? I don't think it impacts it that much. I mean, it's a big piece miss for them, but they have a lot of great post players. And I mean, it's going to be a battle, and we'll, we'll be ready for it. I mean, Austin, whoever else goes in, we'll be ready for it. He's, he's going to be a real big. I think he played well. He played really well. I mean, he missed a little funny, but we have the confidence to go out there and do it. I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's talking about in the locker room a couple minutes ago. He, he messed up one play, but we're like, that's all right. I mean, freshmen do that. I mean, you just got to continue to learn and grow every day in practice. And he's, he's, he's been doing that every day in practice. And that, um, we kind of seen that yesterday. And we have a confidence, we have a confidence of him going in there and playing well. And uh, we, I mean, he's going to go out there and do that what he can in the short amount of time he's in. How much would it mean for you particularly to be able to have a guy like Colin or you know Brandon or any of those guys to be able to take that step forward kind of like you did last year down the stretch here? It would be very big uh, for, I mean, that spot is still open. So any, any three of one of those three um, capable of going in there and just kind of getting that spark that we need off the bench. I mean, offensively, knock down some shots or get extra rebounds or defensively block shot. Uh, and just wall up. I mean, just really, like I said, that, that spark, that, that energy off the bench that we really need. The Minnesota coach said after yeah. game yesterday he thought their guys were just trying to draw fouls on you instead of just finishing. I mean, was that something you noticed in game at all? You know, I mean, affecting them like that? I don't really notice in game. I'm just trying to just kind of, first of all, trying not to foul, but it's just kind of walling up. And if I'm able to block a shot, go after it and not, not forcing too much stuff and not trying to hack someone. But, I mean, they they kept attacking me, Iggy and Isaiah, and we, we did a very good job of walling up and keeping them keep keep out. And I mean, just keep walling up. But, uh, they, they kept attacking, but we did a very good job of walling up. How do you balance, I guess, trying not to foul with just sort of playing the way you want to play on defense? Um, you just got to kind of, I think, pick and choose where, where to be more aggressive. I mean, in the first couple minutes, you can't be too aggressive, but it's just, at the same time, you're just not going to give them a layup. So you just got to wall up. I mean, as the game goes on, you can be a little bit more aggressive depending on how many fouls you have. I mean, fouls are going to happen, but you can't have bad fouls reaching in and coming down hard on someone. So you just got just got to protect those, I mean, five fouls that you have and just go in there and play your game. You become more conscious, I guess, during the game of kind of what they're calling and what they're letting go. Yeah, definitely. Within the first couple minutes, you can definitely see what the refs are calling. I mean, if they're calling reaching, if they're calling fouls, hand checks, this or that, um, you, you kind of see what they're calling. And I mean, there's always guys on the bench always tell me, give me tips, or if they see something, I'm always, they always want to talk to me, and I, I'll listen to them. And so it's really, uh, those first couple minutes are really key.
John, I guess growing up in Ohio, I guess how did you view this rivalry? I guess as, a, as an outsider. Before I moved to Ohio, I actually grew up in Grand Rapids, so I kind of had the kind of had the feel. My whole my mom's side of the family was all Michigan, Michigan State fans, so like I always watched the football and basketball games, so I kind of had a little feeling. But now that being here, um, it's it's very different, um, especially being on this side. Um, it, it's going to be a very intense game on Sunday. It's going to be a lot, of, a lot of energy in the building. It'll be, it'll be a battle. I guess what do you kind of tell the guys that maybe aren't from around here, maybe like you know, Collins from Florida, guys that maybe don't grow up in the environment with this rivalry? What do you tell them about this? I mean, just just be ready for it. I mean, we just have we're going to have a great two days of practice. We're going to be dialed in. We're going to be focused and just know that um, you can't, don't focus on outside. Just focus on what we can control and just go in there and play our game on Sunday. All right, thanks, guys.